Well, Chris, as I mentioned at the outset there, you are you have quite an interesting role. You are a CIO and serve a lot of the kind of traditional role inside of uh, ServiceNow. I might add a, a, a company itself that has a lot of tech talent outside of the IT department. Uh, but you also spend a lot of time with your peers uh, as an advocate for the company, as a uh, a person to commiserate with as a as an advisor of sorts to them as well. And as such, you have perspectives both as a leader uh, of the function, but also one who who speaks so often with other leaders. And I know, as I mentioned at the outside again, you, you have uh, experienced across your uh, roughly a little bit less than six years with the company, just remarkable growth and transformation within ServiceNow itself, and also helped foster a lot of the same with a lot of your, your client companies. I, I thought we'd begin with a, a rather broad topic of digital transformation. You know, across especially the past year plus that's the, of the quarantine related to the pandemic, um, all things being equal, digital transformation and the degree to which organizations had focused on it has been a source of resilience for those who have. And I wonder if you could maybe take a moment to reflect on some of what you've seen uh, and some of the steps that leading organizations, including your own, uh, have undertaken in order to foster that resilience during a very trying time. Sure thing, Peter. And, and as you mentioned, ServiceNow serves about 80% of the Fortune 500. And I have the privilege of talking with a lot of the leadership teams from those Fortune 500 companies. And you're right, resilience does come to mind. And we can all go back to last March. You know, we're all scrambling, trying to figure out what's next, how do we organize ourselves, how do we keep our companies running, and tech. Um, became the source of resilience, if you will, helping us all easily transition to work from home as supply chains were disrupted, how do we leverage technology to bridge the gap? And I think that was sort of the first chapter as we all reacted to the pandemic. But since then, we've actually seen people starting to double down materially more on digital transformation than they had in the past. And it's really three big themes that keep popping up across every, every conversation. The first one is how do I use digital to either protect my top line or invent new digital services to grow it? So as the traditional means of reaching the customer have been interrupted, how do I leverage digital to, to maintain that connection with the customer? You could have, for example, companies like Pepsi launch snacks.com, a direct to consumer offering. You have manufacturing companies starting to create software business models, subscription revenue, right, and, and healthcare companies saying, how do I innovate on the patient experience with video appointments? Things that had maybe been on the back burner for a long time, but the pandemic absolutely accelerated. So the first one is all about that digital connection to the customer and how do you maintain that and how do you start to grow revenue with the invention of new digital services? The second one is all about, it gets a variety of different names productivity, scaling operations, optimizing the financial model. And, and it's been an opportunity for companies to look at all the sacred cows that they've had and say, how do we, how do we get rid of this? And because of what the pandemic did is it, it took away all the constraints, all the reasons why something couldn't be done because it had to be done, leveraging technology. And as a few CIOs have mentioned to me, how do we make sure we don't fall back into, we don't allow our companies to fall back into old habits where decisions would take nine months as opposed to things getting done in three weeks. And, and, and so the second big one is around productivity, which is really around automating work. Gartner uses the term hyper automation, which is bringing together workflow automation and RPA and process mining where platforms start to tell you what you should go do next in terms of driving more efficiencies and speed. And the third one, um, not to be um, understated is risk management. Enterprise risk management, new kinds of risks has emerged. People have to look at human capital risk in a new way with the pandemic. Cyber, right? There's been, you know, I won't recap the number of headlines on cyber, but remains a daunting challenge for everyone. But new sorts of risk in terms of data privacy, ethical use of algorithms and machine learning. So making sure at, a, at an enterprise level you have um, you know, that singular view of risk and you're mitigating risk faster than you have before to make, make, make sure you can maintain focus on the strategic objectives of the company. 